Okay, three things people are going to like about Diablo 4 Season 4 after playing the PTR, and three things people are not going to like about it. And one thing that maybe you could go either way on. First thing people are going to like, basically all of the classes are going to feel strong. Druid has like an insane boulder deal going on right now. Rogue is just as strong as it always was. Sorcerer has the crazy frozen orb. Necromancer minions are actually OP. And the whirlwind or dust devil barbarian, I should say, is literally hilarious. So it seems like they're going the way of sort of the reverse nerf. Everyone seems like they're going to be strong going into season four and people will probably like that. Number two, people are definitely gonna like the improved hell types. The amount of mob density is massively increased. The new system where like worms are belching stuff up, the new events that are on the screen and the rewards and experience are far better than they have ever been. Therefore, making the hell type a more enjoyable experience than it was prior. This is definitely a second thing that people are going to like about season four. Number three is an obvious one. Temporary and the master working system now allows you to customize your gear in a way that further suits what you want your character to actually do. So I think the itemization and master working is something that most people are going to enjoy when they get into the game. I'm also gonna throw in a little bonus one for point number three here, which is the trading system is now going to allow you to trade these legendaries as well with the greater affix system. Now allows you to get like a multiple greater affix, trade it for other ones with maybe the affixes you want or trade for gold, etc. These are definitely things that people are gonna like going into the next season. Now let's talk about the things that people might not like going into the next season and changes that were made. Veiled crystals, you're gonna need a lot of them, but rare items now have less affixes, meaning only legendary and unique items really matter. Because of that, you're gonna to have to collect and salvage rare items even if you're not gonna use them just to get these materials. So while picking up, salvaging the codex, all of these things are good changes, we're still going to have to be salvaging and collecting, it says rare or better equipment, but if I actually go here and salvage these items here for it, like let's just do, here I'll go like this, I'll just go down the route here of legendary, you're gonna know this, these are better than, you know, better than rares, but you're not actually getting veiled crystals for this, meaning you're going to need to go and get rare items and salvage rare items in order to get veiled crystal, or you can get them from loot explosions, et cetera. There's other ways to get them, but veiled crystals are definitely gonna be annoying to acquire. Speaking of annoying to acquire, you still are going to be farming boss mat materials. So we're still gonna be getting living steel, exquisite blood, distilled fear, and then of course, Andario, you're gonna need these new shackles, etc. So you're gonna to have to be farming some of the other bosses so that you can farm some of the other bosses. And people didn't like that in previous seasons, though they did make it better. As I noticed, the living steel is now dropping from like random mobs, etc. You do get an actual upgrade in terms of how many materials you're requiring. This is still going to be a core functional part of the game if you wish to get uber unique items and most people probably aren't going to do the repeated grind to try to get ubers but that is the way you're going to get them and because things like exquisite blood come from legions and the world boss and those are sort of timed events you're going to have to if you want to eventually go down and fight the new andario bosses etc you have to be especially careful about making sure you fight the things that are on timers which can be kind of annoying for some people Number three, both tempering and enchanting still allows you to roll the same affix over and over and over again. So you could roll, let's say you have damage, you don't want damage for some reason, you could literally roll the same affix three times in a row, which can be highly annoying. I'm gonna snowball all these into just like a quality of life sort of thing here. So if I go to enchanting and I go here and I try to roll the overpower here, it says you will not be able to cancel the enchanting action is it, you know, once you've selected the replacement. And you do this, it doesn't tell you that it is going to roll this one if you accept the other into a non-greater affix. So let's see, it's 56% now. I had 90%, so if I just cancel out of this and don't take it and I go back to my item, you can see it's 56%. I didn't actually except the enchant. It just removed the greater affix, even though I didn't take the reroll. So it doesn't tell you that in the warning, it warns you that it's gonna replace it, but you see it says 90% right here, right? But it says 56% here. It's actually not 90%. It got gutted down to 56%, even though it says 90. So maybe this is a bug or a visual UI thing, but there is some quality of life things like that that can probably be cleaned up when you use all items. For here, it says common, magic, and rare, but if I click all items, it doesn't say legendary here, so you assume it's just not gonna crunch your legendaries, but if you go here, we destroy all equipment, you do that, and it also crunches your legendaries. So just 
a couple basic quality of life UI things if they release it as it is, can be annoying for some people. This would probably be an easy fix, however. They now have the warning at least that tells you it will irreversibly destroy all of your items, not just the rare items, et cetera. So that's an upgrade. But definitely a few quality of life clarity things could be just cleaned up just a little bit. But I think that one's an easy enough fix. So now the one that I think is going to be the most controversial in terms of the changes when it goes into season four or the additional content, what have you, that is going to be effectively what we're going to refer to as greater rifts. That is the pit. It's this new, you do a tier, you click on the thing, you open, you go into the tier and you do this greater rift or what have you. This is something that is quick, enjoyable in my opinion, and just a fun blast through. But here's the thing about it. This is effectively Greater Rifts from Diablo 3. Some people did not like Greater Rifts in Diablo 3, and that is effectively what we're receiving now years later in Diablo 4. So if you're one of the people that didn't like them, you're not going to like this because it's the exact same thing. But if you're one of the people that, oh, wow, I really liked Greater Rifts, for instance, in Diablo 3, then you're obviously going to like this because that's literally quite exactly what it is. You have the 10 minute timer, you kill the things, you go to the next stage, and then you kill the boss, you get a loot drop, and it's all over. That is all this actually is. I myself, like I said, I like Grey Rifts, but for me, this is a W. For some people, it's not going to be. It's going to be rehashed content or something they've already done or just something they didn't like in a previous game that's been added years later. So it's going to be a split in terms of how people actually feel about this one. That's why, for me, it's the bonus controversial one. There's plenty more. I am sure I missed some as well, but for now, I'm just going to go through three things I like, three things people might not like, and one controversial one. How are you on the Grey the Rifts? Do you like it, not like it? Leave a comment down below, let me know. I am curious to see that. With that being said, love you all. See you on the next video. Short and sweet, this one.